With the recent acquisition of uncrewed airborne system provider Edge Autonomy, there's a lot of uncertainty in terms of what the new and improved Redwire will look like behind the scenes. This acquisition is massive in scope and fundamentally rewrites Redwire as the business it was. In today's video, let's piece together what's available to provide ourselves with a snapshot of Redwire Corporation version 2.0. My name is Scott, welcome to the channel, let's talk Redwire. So a quick bit of housekeeping, this video is going to be the last essay style video that I post for a, a little while. This is largely due to a new addition to the family that is expecting expected uh, literally any day now. Uh, so this video is going to be a little bit more straight to the point. Uh, I mean, that's kind of more or less on brand anyways, but still well researched as you've grown to expect. Going forward for the channel, I still plan to be on Rocket Lab Weekly. Obviously, I'm going to miss one or two, I'd imagine, when the baby arrives. Um, and outside of that, I still plan to, you know, post company updates on X. And then, of course, still keeping the Patreon valuation models up to date. So I just wanted to kind of give you guys a bit of a heads up going forward in terms of what to expect, because I don't know what to expect going forward in the best way possible. Um, with that out of the way, let's roll into the video. To make things clear, I'll take 30 seconds to go over my receipts and explain where everything is coming from for today's video. So this main tab here, this is Redwire's quarterly data, and it's pretty self-explanatory. Every three months, Redwire posts a financial update. Everything is taken here and compiled and, and computed, however you wanna look at that, ultimately made into charts and graphs down below, all the fancy stuff. But for today's video, essentially what's happening is the quarterly data is being taken from this tab and being brought into a second tab that integrates Edge's full year 2022 to full year 2024 financials from an 8K that was filed back in April. So merging the financials of the two companies gives us a glimpse into how the new and improved Redwire would look as though Redwire and Edge have been together throughout the past three years. So again, the quarterly Redwire data is compressed into annual, paired with Edge's annual data, and then ultimately this is the, we'll call it Redwire 2.0. So putting this in chart form, starting with revenue, we have Redwire's revenue here in red, Edge's in blue, and the combination of the two here in white. Net revenue grew 89% between 2022 and 2023, and 26% between 2023 and 2024, highlighting a compounded annual growth rate of 54%. For 2025, Redwire is guiding for 535 to 605 million, outlining a 7 to 21% increase year over year. Redwire's Q1 came in a little lower than expected due to projects being pushed to the right, so to be conservative, we're going to go with the lower end of the revenue guidance and go with the 535 million. Turning to gross margins, we can expect an uptick with edge autonomy largely carrying the weight, elevating Redwire's 20% average closer to a range of 30%. Operating margin tells a similar story, with edge lifting Redwire closer to break even for what otherwise would have been around negative 10%. Despite improved margins, edge's influence isn't enough to bring the new Redwire to net income profitability. Alongside the confirmation of Edge's acquisition, Redwire reiterated 2025 guidance for adjusted EBITDA of 70 to 105 million, as well as free cash flow positivity. Unfortunately, Edge's adjusted EBITDA wasn't disclosed in the 8K mentioned previously, so we have nothing to compare with, and free cash flow positivity is too ambiguous of a term to put a number to. This could either mean positive by $1, or positive by $25 million like we saw back in 2023. Due to the uncertainty, we'll put a pin in this for the time being. So next up, let's get an idea of what to expect in terms of the updated share count, and more specifically, shareholder dilution. As of Q1 end, Redwire had 77 million shares outstanding. As of edge closing, Redwire is now expected to have something closer to 165 million. All right, quick update. I recorded the original video on Sunday, and as you would have it, the very next day, Redwire announced a common stock offering. 
So to make a long story short, we can now expect an additional 15.5 million shares plus a possible 2.3 million on top of the 165, 167 million range that we just went over, bringing the new net share count total to 186 million shares, give or take. Uh, in a moment in the video, I'll mention 115% dilution. This is now looking close to 140% dilution. Um, understandably, the share price has responded. So keep that in mind in the valuation section as well when we're talking like the price to sales. That is going to be more indicative of Friday's close than it is of the post common stock offering share price. So just wanted to patch in a quick update. Keep those in mind as we progress through the rest of the video. Let's get back to it. So looking at what we have so far in a bit of a crude manner, Redwire will see 115% dilution in exchange for 2x in revenue with much healthier margins. This sounds like a decent exchange, but we also need to factor in the additional $440 million in debt Redwire took on to finance this deal. There's definitely some give and take with this acquisition, but all in all is expected to be accretive to Redwire as a whole. Historically, Redwire has traded with a price to sales between 1 and 4. Factoring in the acquisition, Redwire is on track to close out Q2 with a price to sales of something closer to 7, though this is set to be easily worked off as the dominoes start to fall for Redwire throughout the remainder of the year. One of these dominoes that I'd like to highlight is the Valkyrie Hall Effect thruster that Redwire is building in partnership with Phase 4. Valkyrie is a commercially licensed version of NASA's best-in-class H71M thruster. Phase 4 is expecting to have the capacity for 22 to 25 Valkyries per month starting in Q2 of 2026. So going with the low end, 22 per month, multiplying by 12 months, is 264 thrusters per year. Rounding this down, we're going to go with 250. To date, the pricing of each Valkyrie hasn't been publicly disclosed, but if we look at Northrop Grumman's Knight 1X thruster, which is also a NASA licensed H71M, we can see that the price per integrated unit is estimated to be in the range of 0.5 to 1.2 million. Pairing Valkyrie's lower power class with their higher volume production outlines a revenue range of something closer to $400 to $900,000 per unit. Going with the lower end of this range at $500,000 per unit with an assumed 40-60 revenue split in favor of Phase 4 brings us to a base case of an additional $50 million in revenue for Redwire starting in Q2 of 2026. Carrying Redwire's 2025 low-end guidance of $535 million, then introducing this new $50 million revenue rate, already brings the year-over-year -year revenue growth rate up to 9%. Updating our assumptions to be a little bit more bullish now, lands us with $150 million in revenue instead of the $50 million previously, representing a 3x over the base case and a 25% increase in revenue compared to the high end of the currently guided 2025 range of $605 million. Now, keep in mind, this revenue growth, this is for the thrusters alone, let alone the rest of the business like their solar arrays, their pillboxes, their VLEO platforms, their unmanned aerial drones now. So even if 2025 is a bit of a slower year in terms of revenue growth, Redwire seems to be setting themselves up nicely for some meaningful growth in the years to come. Now, full disclosure, I do hold a position of Redwire. I bought in about a year ago uh, in the 6 to $7 range, trimmed, I think it was like 40% of that position in the 20s, bought that right back in, in the, I think $10 was the average in March. And then recently I trimmed again because the two blocks that I bought in March um, appreciated, I think 60% and 130% respectively. I'll check and I'll, I'll put it on the screen, but it essentially my five-year thesis for Redwire share price unfolded in like two or three months. So I've by no means lost my faith in Redwire. It's more a product of rebalancing. And um, if Redwire stock does decide to come down, um, which I kind of anticipate it well, I, I'd be happy to buy back in. And if not, like, you know, worst case scenario, I have cash on the sidelines for another opportunity. So um, once that Q2 print does come in, I wouldn't be surprised if the market kind of realizes the amount of dilution or the amount of debt that Redwire is taking on to fund this acquisition and kind of has a little bit of a 
a, a fit. But like I said, all in all, the the trim was more to do with a uh, more to do with rebalancing than it was to try to time the market or anything like that. I I generally try to avoid that stuff. I'm more like medium to long term, but Redwire just outgrew the the portfolio. I, I generally like that 10 to 15 percent for each holding, and Redwire was kind of flirting with 20 percent. So it now represents, I think it's right around the 9, 10% mark. And I have no plans to sell that. Like it would literally need to double from here for me to consider selling that. It's kind of like a, I like to trim a bit and, and add a bit like to the, to the top to the core positions, but ultimately I like to keep that core position. Like same thing with Rocket Lab. I've, I've trimmed and added back in a, a few times, but ultimately the, the, the core shares are just untouched. So. I think that's all I have to say about Redwire. Um, I mean, there's plenty more to say, but I'm going to cut it off there because I got a baby to catch. <laughs> so be sure to check out the Patreon to view and download the valuation models that we go over on the channel, including Rocket Lab, Black Sky, Shift 4, Planet Labs, as well as Redwire as soon as the Q2 goes live, and we have a bit better visibility into those unknown metrics. So whether it's for the models, whether it's to support the channel, or whether it's simply for good karma, the link for the Patreon is in the description below. Um, thank you guys for the hangout. As always, um, wish me luck, and I'll uh, I'll see you guys on the other side. Have an awesome day. Peace.